AI is coming to your smartphone, like it or not. And here's how Samsung is doing it with their new S24 Ultra. So we've tested out all of its new AI features. Some are pretty cool, some were a bit surprising, but more on that later. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that we've shortened the footage here or there to save some time. And also this was done on a pre-release S24 model. So let's get into it. Interpreter is a really clever way of translating different language in-person conversations using text and your phone's screen. So it's built right into the phone itself, and I'll show you how to use it. You just swipe down to get into your settings. We'll extend those out, and you can find it under Interpreter. So we'll just open that up. Now, um, you can hold your phone towards the other person and just kind of flip this side of the screen upside down so they can read text, and then you can read text. But I'll just flip it back for the purpose of a demo. You can choose your language. So we have French in there, uh, also uh, I think up to 13 languages. And then you just press the mic button to start. So I might start with French. Bonjour, quel est votre nom? Hello, what's your name? Hi there, my name is Val. Bonjour, je m'appelle Val. There you go, you get the idea. Transcript Assist uses AI to take a voice recording that you captured, say, at school or at work, and then convert that into a transcript that you can read later. Let's show you how it works. You have to use the voice uh, recording app here from Samsung's. I've created a couple, so this is just a French recording of a couple of people talking, but I think it was something to do with buying a house. So we can select that, and then we can hit transcribe, and obviously you want to transcribe it to English, and then we'll have a think about it. This was about a three minute uh, conversation. So it is having a think. Okay, so here we are. There are the different speakers and it looks like there's some form. I don't know if it's perfect, but anyway, there's a conversation there. And then from there, I can look at a summary of the transcript so I can have a think about that. And there was a discussion about a trip to Hong Kong, about a mysterious event. But there you go. And then once you're done, you can actually go up and add it directly into, say, Samsung Notes. And then from there, you can organize it. So maybe now that it's in Samsung Notes, I can go to the AI feature here and auto format it. And let's choose Meeting Notes. So there we go. Live Translate is a really clever feature that allows you to have a phone conversation in real time with someone who doesn't speak the same language as you. So we're going to do something a little bit different here because in order to demonstrate it, it was tough to do in the studio. So I'm going to show you some footage of when we did a demo when I was overseas checking out the features for the first time. So I just pick a restaurant from my contacts list and then I can call them. And from there, I basically just choose voice assist. And at that point, I can start seeing what the other person is saying on screen. Uh, there's a text translation that goes along with my voice translation. And so really what I do is I ask what I want to ask. Hello, can I make a reservation for dinner? And they can reply to me. They'll say it first, I'll hear it back in Spanish, and then it will speak it out again in English so I can hear it. What day and what time? Then I can answer. Tuesday at 8 p.m. for six people and then they will have it translated back to them. So it's a super cool feature. I've tried it out, it works really, really well, and it really happens quite seamlessly, and you just use your phone like you normally would anyway. Circle to Search is one of my favorite features, and it's a way to search for things by snapshotting your phone screen so you don't actually have to leave the app that you're in, or the web page, or the social feed, or even the video, and then you can just circle what you want to have looked up, or squiggle over it, or use the S Pen, or highlight it, and then it'll be entered into Google and you'll find search results pretty seamlessly. So let's give Circle to Search a try. Let's open up the gallery. I've got a picture of a flower. So to engage it, you just hold down on the home button down here. Then I want to just circle something like these flowers in the background that I'm interested in. And lo and behold, these seem to be peonies. But I want to say augment my search. I can say just tap into here and say I want to look for blue peonies. And then I can just search for that instead and you'll see that we've got now blue ones too. So you not only just can find something you're looking for, you can also augment it by adding a word or two. Another way you could use the AI with Circle to Search is say you're looking at a skyline. This is a famous Sydney skyline. And you want to know what building that is. So I just press the button and initiate Circle to Search. Draw a circle around, say, this building here. 
And there we go, it says it's Crown Sydney, and then I can get some information about where it is, directions, when it's open, and all that sort of thing. So, pretty cool. You can also use it to help you find stuff in videos. Say you see a hat that you like in a video and you want to know where it's from, or you want to learn more about somebody in a video. So let's say we'll open this video about F1. I'm just going to hold down the button when I see somebody I want to know more about. Then I'm going to circle them like so, and then see what Google comes up with. And that is Carlos himself. Chat Assist helps you refine conversational tones used in messages and you can choose from tones like professional or casual or some other fun ones. And I guess I think this is for people who might not be that confident about how they communicate over text messages. So once I've entered my text, I can use this little Galaxy AI icon here with the stars, and then I can decide what I want to do. Let's look at writing style. And from here, it's going to give me some options. If I want, I can choose casual. Yo, what time are we meeting for dinner? Hey, pretty cash. Social is what time are we meeting for dinner tomorrow? And it's got a lot of icons and hashtags in it, right? Okay. Polite, could you please let me know what time we could, would be convenient for you to meet for dinner tomorrow? All right, great. And then Emojify, and then I can decide to copy it or just insert it. So I'm gonna insert it in there, hit send, and off we go. So AI can help you summarize your note taking. So this is Note Assist, and basically it helps you create an AI generated summary of your notes. So the way you use this is it's only supported in Samsung Notes, so you have to open up Samsung Notes and that's where you need your notes to be kept. So here we go. I'm going to pick a note. So this is a note that I created when I was researching Samsung's AI. Uh, so here it is. So I guess I pressed the little uh, Galaxy AI stars icon here and it will tell me. It'll auto format it, it'll summarize it, correct spelling or translate. Let's try summarize and it's doing something here. So okay. So there are a few points. I've got to say that that's probably not all of what I was saying and probably not the most important ones, but there are some settings here you can customize. So let's try this one in the corner here. And now I can choose between standard and detailed notes. I think that's what I need. So okay, we're hitting done. And these are much more around the total context of what I was trying to capture. So that's how the Note Assist works. Let's take a look at how it manages to just clean up your notes as well. So this time I'm going to choose auto format, headers and bullets. And let's see it clean up my messy note taking. Oh wow, that looks so much better. And there we go. And then from there, I guess you can copy, replace or add to. And a quick example of using AI to translate your notes. So I'm in Samsung's notes, which is where it's supported. Select my note, I press the little Galaxy AI button down here, which is the little stars. This time I go to translate. And from there I can choose my language. Let's try Spanish, translate. And it has a think and off we go. I don't speak Spanish, so I cannot actually tell you how good the translation is, but it was pretty quick and it translated it into Spanish. You can use AI to help you with your web browsing as well. So you can turn long web pages into succinct summaries that you can read really easily. So I'll open up the Samsung browser here. This is an article that I wrote. It's a pretty long article about AI, blah, blah, blah. And so what I would do is I can see if I scroll down, I can see the Galaxy AI um, uh, summarize feature at the bottom with the little stars icon. I can hit summarize and it has created a summary here. So that's a pretty long summary, but maybe I want something a little quicker, a little shorter. I can go from detailed to standard here and hit done. And that is a shorter version. And also, of course, you can then translate it. I can just tap this here and say I want to translate it to, uh, well, I've got Spanish, but maybe we try Chinese and it will translate it to Chinese there. Actually, a Chinese summary. Loving hearing about Samsung's AI features so far. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss all of our great content. Now, back to the video. So there are some great AI-enhanced creativity features on the S24, and this includes things like generative edit, edit assist, and super slow-mo. So basically what happens is the AI is used to complete things like an image or maybe adding frames between a video. When you use the AI in slow-mo mode, it actually can take a normal video and then use AI to insert the missing frames. So here is a video I just took a second ago of just me panning around the area I'm recording here. You can see that I'm kind of moving from here, whoops, across and over to here. 
but now I want to see it in instant slow-mo mode. And what you can do is you can hit play and hold down with your finger against it, and you can see how it's nice and smooth. Now, normally if that was playing back, it would be kind of juddery and stilted, but because it's adding frames in between the frames that are already there, it gives you this effect like that. So if I want to keep that, you can press the uh, edit icon, and then you can go to adjust speed, and then I can go down to say quarter speed, um, and then you can kind of permanently commit that to the video itself. And that's using AI to fill in the missing frames. With Edit Suggest, this uses AI to analyze your photos and then make suggestions about how to improve it. Now this uses a suite of tools to clean up your image, but you can also access these manually as well. Here's how it works. So you just open up gallery to a photo. This is some flowers I just shot before. It doesn't have the best lighting. So you just swipe up or you can press the I button and then it has now decided that it needs to be remastered. So I imagine it's gonna do some adjustments. I just hit remaster and then it, the AI is then processing the image. And there we go. This is cool because it gives you an actual slider of the before and after and it's definitely brightened up the image and cleaned it up. So it does look better. And then from there I can decide to save it or look at a zoom of it and that type of thing. And there's even some more options here which I can go into and save it as a copy. Generative edit is a super smart way of basically filling in an image's background that wasn't there before in order to improve your image. So you might want to use it, say, for straightening up an image where it has to draw some background in order to make it straight, or if you want to remove something out of your image, like a lamppost or some ugly telephone wires, it would then draw in the background behind it, which could be some grass or maybe a blue sky. I've got a photo here of our back porch and there's a bunch of stuff there that I think is really ugly and I don't want to see there. So I'm going to just hit the edit button here and then I'm going to choose the uh, uh, Galaxy AI stars here to open up the AI features. And then I'm going to draw around what I don't want there. So that's all this stuff. Now what's interesting is, is that one thing to remove something, but with generative AI, it also tries to think about what should be there. So I've selected it and I think you mentioned just kind of hold it like that. And now I've got an option of uh, removing it like so. And uh, I just hit generate like that. And now it's sending this image to the cloud, to, uh, to a farm where it does a lot of AI processing, and then it'll send the image back to me. So let's see what it comes up with. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. It didn't erase the junk, it actually suggested something better to put in there and actually it looks really seamless and pretty good. And I don't know, I don't mind that at all. So uh, maybe I was hoping that it would erase it, but it's just being a generative AI type of thing, it also, I guess, figures out what should be there. And uh, this is an option I wasn't expecting. Okay, moving on from that, let's try to straighten something. I'll press the AI feature here and I could say, all right, let's make this look a little straighter. You can see that there's part of the image missing there, but it will generate that stuff. Uh, so I'll press generate, it's sending the image to the cloud, it's having to think about it, and then it'll send the new image back down. So this is not on device processing, this is actually happening in the cloud. All right, well, it's filled in um, and done a great job too. The, uh, the brickwork looks like it's painted, the uh, grass still looks like grass, and it's changed the perspective of the image a bit. Um, so yeah, that's all using generative AI. I wonder if what happens if we try to remove something from this now. So I guess I can select uh, my AI features, maybe we'll try to remove this chair. So you select it and then it says touch and hold your selection. Let's actually, let's move it. Let's move it over here. And I guess we just hit generate and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we've got two. Well, there you have it. There are a lot of AI features in the S24 Ultra. Again, I thought some were really impressive and some just didn't quite go the way I expected. Something to keep in mind though is because AI is always learning, it should get better over time. So what do you think? Do you think that these are where they need to be right now? Love to know, leave us a comment. Also, if you wanna see our full review of the S24 Ultra on gadgetguy.com.au, we'll leave a link in the description. But otherwise, keep in mind too that these features will be coming to the S23 phones as well as the Galaxy Z series of foldable phones, so you don't necessarily have to buy the S24 to get these features in the future. But anyway, I'm Val Quinn. Thanks for joining me on this little tour of Samsung's AI features, and we'll catch you in the next one.